Did you know that in RouterOS v7, we recently did an overhaul of NetWatch? It is one of our favorite tools for monitoring and automating our networks. And after this video, we hope it will be one of your favorites too. You might be thinking, monitoring the network? I already have SNMP server for that, and automation? What for? Well, most importantly, NetWatch can run RouterOS scripts and change configuration based on conditions in your network. In this video, we will take a look at a few possible use cases. So, what can we do with it? First, let's say you have an LTE connection that you use for long periods of time. There might be some mobile ISPs that block internet access after a certain time frame. But don't worry, with the NetWatch you can monitor one access, and when it becomes unreachable, it will simply toggle your LTE interface. A similar script can also be helpful while working with third-party modems if the modem is prone to issues and requires a restart. All right, here's how we will do it. First, open up Tools, NetWatch, add uh, a new NetWatch entry. First, what we see is host. This will be the IP address that we are monitoring. In general, we would want to add a public IP address for this uh, scenario. But in my case, I will just uh, add the uplink address that I, I am monitoring, that is my ISP. This is the address that uh, I want to monitor. Next, we can see that we have type here. Uh, there are a few types uh, available to us. We will get in uh, more detail about them a bit later, but uh, first we will learn about simple and ICMP. The type simple, it will just send a ping to your host that you're monitoring. And if the ping will fail, then um, your down scripts and up scripts will get uh, executed respectively. It's just a simple ping and it checks if there is a response or if there is no response. Uh, but since uh, in theory we are using a mobile connection here, and mobile connections uh, are prone to losing some packets sometimes. So we will use type ICMP. Now, ICMP is a bit more sophisticated than uh, type simple. Uh, with ICMP, there will be 10 packets sent every so often and uh, you can lose some packets. In fact, we made it so that uh, you can lose up to 85% packets by default. We made this uh, with the reasoning that primarily we want to check if uh, the host is reachable. We don't want to check the quality of the link. So by the default, we are checking if it's reachable. So we allow for some uh, packet loss by default. But of course, you can change this if your use case is a bit different. There are also other parameters like uh, round trip time, a bunch of thresholds, so feel free to explore them if needed. But for us, all that we really need is host and type, and we have that now. Now you can see that uh, there's up, down tabs, and test tab. These tabs contain uh, commands that will get executed depending on the status of uh, our network entry here. So in our case, we'll just uh, toggle interface here. And uh, if uh, our ISP would be blocking our connection here, and he would resume it if uh, we toggle it, uh, this would be enough for us. Uh, there's also test tab. The test tab will execute the script every time uh, the probe is launched. By default, it's every 10 seconds, but uh, you can adjust the interval if you want. But we don't need the test tab, and uh, up tab, uh, we can leave it to be as well. Let's press apply. Uh, there is some uh, start delay. Uh, by default, I think it was three seconds. And okay, up. We can see all the statistics. Uh, the script is working. Let's open up our interfaces here. We can see that uh, I'm toggling either one interface here. Uh, so I will enable firewall filter rule here to uh, drop the ICMP packets to simulate that our network is down. And I can see that uh, the probe immediately went down. If you can see failed tests here, we can see that the other one is being toggled. So, all is working. Just adjust your script to, to LTE interface and uh, that's it. Imagine, uh, you have your internal network, you have some servers that are behind that, provided by Mikrotik, and you have primary and uh, backup uh, server. With NetWatch, you can monitor uh, your primary server, and if the primary server goes down, you can uh, just uh, make NetWatch adjust the NAT rules so there would be some failover happening. And to do so, we will just open up NetWatch, enter the host IP. In uh, this case, the host IP that we want to monitor is this. 
I have some naturals here. Let's say that uh, only one of them is active right now. So this line will disable the first natural since the host would be down. And uh, the second line would uh, enable the natural for our backup server. So that's our down script done. Uh, so for our up script, we just need to flip it around. So not for uh, primary server would get enabled again and disabled for the backup server. We can press apply. We can see that it's up. Let's uh, simulate a network outage here. And now it's down. And we can see that a uh, NAT failover happened. And now if we resolve the outage, we, we should see that uh, our NAT will uh, fix itself now. And that's it. Now if your internal server goes down, but you have a backup server running, Microtik will adjust its NAT automatically and will direct traffic to the backup server. Perhaps you are hosting a website. Well, with NetWatch, you can not only monitor IP or TCP connection to it, but you can even check HTTP status codes. So you will always know if there is an unwanted 404 response or a server error. All right, let's monitor your web page now. Uh, so just as before, open up NetWatch, add a new probe. In host, you need to enter the IP address of your website. Now it's very important to set the probe type to HTTP GET. With HTTP GET, NetWatch will send a probe to your website and it will return a status code and uh, it will evaluate the returned status code against these codes here. Like for example, I have 100 up to 399 here. Uh, you can also add uh, multiple entries here to exclude some codes, for example. You could even do it like this, for example. Now, let's say you got a uh, response code 302 the probe will only be a failure in case 302 is outside of these two ranges that we have defined here. So yeah, read up on uh, the status codes uh, and their meanings on your own, but uh, in general, all codes ab above 400 are errors. So evaluate what you want to monitor. So we have a uh, button probe, the what is uh, all right to see. And uh, we can add pretty much anything here. Uh, you can use tool email to send an email when your website goes down. But uh, here we wanted to highlight how to use variables in uh, NetWatch scripts. So in this case, once I press apply and enable, we can see that uh, status is up. We can see HTTP status code here, but I have defined uh, a variable here that we can use in commands. Here we can see that uh, the code is 302. So in event your website goes down, you can uh, use this variable, use tool email send, and in, in body, you can specify the status code. So you know that not only your website is down, you will have specific information, what is the error code or code in general that you're interested in. And that's it. It's all that you need to know when monitoring uh, your website. IPv6 and VRF support is also here. Before I go, here are some last minute tips. While writing scripts with variables, make sure you don't mix up milliseconds with microseconds. Take a close look at IACMP probe default thresholds. Long round trip times in your network could cause false positives. Think about what you want to monitor, quality of connection or just connectivity. Adjust settings accordingly. We really think this will be a great tool for all. If you have any suggestions for NetWatch, let us know. Perhaps we can make it even better.